Welcome back to another episode of Factorio Space Exploration. Today's the day where we finally get to go back to space to do new space stuff to unlock new space things. Not just flying through space to get to other planets, but actual space space. But first we need to make a small modification slash addition to the base here. One of the things we're going to need in space is processed uranium. And just like how we added the additional oil processing into rocket fuel, since we had oil patches nearby to our base, we just so happen to have a big uranium patch right next to the base. Got lucky with that. So this uranium patch right next to our base is going to be for space. I feel like I'm in a Dr. Seuss book. So here's our new uranium processing area, and we are going to seed it with some already crafted uranium 235s. Pop a stack into each one of these guys, and the autosave rears its ugly head. Of course it does. I gotta change the amount of time between autosaves, I think. I think it is about time to do that. And just to get things going, let's swap the productivity modules for speed modules in these centrifuges. And we happen to have this 2x2 strong box, which we can make use of. So each one of these centrifuges has their own buffer chest that it can spit out 235 and then return 235. And then to skim it off the top, we just have a very simple circuit condition. We just wire up a controller directly to the chest and say, when there's more than 80 in that chest, let a few out. And so we'll just skim it off the top whenever it overflows and we can send it down to the logistics area and the rocket area of the base and eventually we'll also connect up this belt so the 238 can go to the base. We're going to need mostly the 235 in space, but eventually we'll need some fuel cells in space and we might want to make some odds and ends with the dark green uranium 238s. So now we've got these new belts running along here and we can get rid of the old belt, which I had planned on because I didn't know we would have this very convenient uranium pocket. We can change this belt to be that. And this guy actually uh, should have been 235, not fuel cells, because we're going to need more 235 than anything else in space. And we can take this belt and just get rid of it, get rid of any of the gaps. And I even had a train up here for delivering the 235 or the fuel cells or whatever. And we can get rid of this whole train and get rid of this belt going all the way down here to the base. So with the uranium situation all sorted out, it's time to finally head back to space. We're going to use this rocket silo down here. This is my personal rocket silo, as you can tell by the little label on this constant combinator. I've loaded it full of some odds and ends, and I've got some odds and ends in my inventory as well. We have to put on our thruster suit so we can breathe in space. And we get in the cargo rocket silo and make sure it's going to the right place. And five, four, three, two... One, blast off. Dish, 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 dish. And we have landed in space. We're breathing in space because I've got a space suit. I've got life support canisters. There's a container here. Let's dump some of this stuff into it. And we need to empty out the landing pad too. Let's actually take a look around. It's been... A really long time. Feels like a million years since we've been up here. And oh my gosh, yeah. This is like another person built this. We're gonna make something way cooler. All of this is going to get completely wiped out. We're gonna start over from scratch. These guys in particular don't actually need to be here. One of the things I've learned as I've gotten accustomed to the mod pack is that you don't need these things on the surface and in orbit at the same time around the same celestial body. The ones we have on the surface also protect us from asteroids in space. And I don't think we need this one in space either. Plus we don't have the power up here to even run that thing. Let's get rid of that. So we're going to wipe out all of this stuff and make something much more impressive. But first, we actually have to do a little bit more temporary research because there is something I cannot live without that we are absolutely going to need as we move forward with this mod pack. And that thing is space rails. There's no way we're going to be able to make a huge base in space. Oh my gosh, I'm in a Dr. Seuss book. We can't make a big base in space without space rail. And that means we need to unlock energy science pack. Pack one. And since we need to build a little temporary layout to do energy science pack one, we may as well make use of it to do a few other things, like get a little bit additional robot speed. 
And if we go down to Energy Science Pack 2, while we're at it, we can also get the Wide Area Beacons, at least the first one, the first tier of Wide Area Beacons, which will help our ground base and our space base tremendously. We can also get another rank of Worker Robot Speed. So we've got some more space to work over here. Let's get things started by researching the thing. We can already research Energy Science Pack 1, and then I need to get together a bunch of machines and figure out how to do the next step. So we gotta do science in space, which means we need space machines. Here's some space machines to build other space machines. The main space machine we need is the space manufactory. We're gonna use some logistics robots, even though apparently I only have 37 here. I guess that'll do. We don't need that many at the moment. So we're gonna copy paste the ingredients for that into that inventory. Oh wow, wait, hang on a second. Four space assembly machines. Yeah, copied 30, that's fine. We're gonna need several of these things. Then we need to make some cosmic water with water and lubricant. We're going to unfreeze some ice. So let me just copy paste that in there. We don't need that much. Let's uh, let's say 40, not 480. That's, oh my gosh. I forgot these space machines. They have such a high internal speed for doing stuff in space that they have a huge buffer, but we don't, we don't need that much. So you have already made a whole bunch of water. There's your water. We need some barreled for the lubricant, and we need a place to get rid of the barrels. So let me do that. Get rid of the empty barrels. There's our lubricant. There's our cosmic water. We're making space manufactories, these big fellas. Boom! And now that we have the space manufactories, we can make some other things. We're going to make some supercomputers. We're going to make some electromagnetics facilities. And then we're going to make, uh, what's this one? Laser facility. Copy paste that. We really do need more robots here, but we'll get to that. We're going to make particle accelerators. And then this guy is plasma generator. Wow, very impressive sounding names here. Hyper cooler. Wow, I wish I was a hyper something. I'm just a normal whatevers. Then we've got thermal radiator. Oh man, that sounds like a super villain. I am thermal radiator. Then we've got decontamination facility in a little fella. That guy gets a little fella. Although all the other ones get the big fella. Radiation facility next goes over here. And it needs some uh, some of these guys, which we just addressed. The processed uranium, turning it into uranium fuel cell. Copy paste that. Bing, bang, boom. And also, uh, it's permanent twilight here in space, so we're going to make some light bulbs. Boom. And boom. And we can get rid of the cable there because we're going to get it there. Wow. Oh, we have more robots all of a sudden. Where'd those come from? Oh, you know what? I bet I was looking at the number of robots in an individual roboport, not the total in the system. We've got 693. That's plenty. And with all these machines we had to build, it's time for a resupply rocket. So here's all the machines we need to do our two tiers of energy science. This is how I start making a build. I lay everything out, all the different machines, and put them in more or less the order they need to go. This is for this machine here, is for energy science back to, which we haven't researched yet. We have to get to that. So I can't set any of these recipes, and we have to unlock at least one new building. So... This is just uh, sort of a placeholder for the future to remember. In this building right here, we'll be making our Energy Science Pack 1. And here's all the things we need. We need the Holmium Plate, which we're going to bring in via rocket. And actually, I don't know if this ended up in a video or if it got edited out, but I had the cargo rocket silo of the first Holmium Plate rocket set improperly, and it ended up crashing here in space. Is this that Holmium rocket? Let me find... Uh, I gotta clean this up in a minute. Oh, it's just the... Okay, not so useful. Almost like I didn't plan it this way. That's just raw ore. Oh, yeah, that's not useful at all. Never mind. We're going to have to bring up a new cargo rocket of the processed Holmium plates. In addition to that, we're going to need significant data, which is sort of a generic thing we're going to be producing in a variety of ways, more efficient ways as we get further into the mod pack. You'll be seeing that guy more often. And then each of the different sciences has their own catalog. This is Science Energy Catalog 1. And we'll also need Energy Insight. We'll be producing that a variety of different ways, I'm pretty sure. And then we'll need some cold thermofluid to keep our machine cold as it does all the stuff. 
We're going to see that a lot as well. The thermo fluid and the energy inside is going to be pretty common. And then everything's going to have its own energy catalog or its own catalog and its own insight. So there's going to be some similarities to a lot of these recipes. And the energy insight is made in here with energy catalog and thermo fluid. It's going to spit out a blank data card, which we have to recycle. A lot of recycling going to be going on. And it will also spit out some warmer thermo fluid, which we'll have to recycle as well. And then in these computers, we'll be making the energy catalog. All the different catalogs have a pretty similar thing going on where you make the catalog based on some different experiments you do and all those experiments get encoded onto data chip things. So we've got conductivity, electromagnetic field data, polarization, and radiation. Doesn't really matter, just think of it like a puzzle and figure out how the puzzle pieces connect together and we need thermo fluid for all these guys as well. So here's the first of the four experiments goes in here, takes that stuff. Here's the next experiment and goes in here and takes this stuff. It just takes a data card and uranium, which we just took care of a few minutes ago. That's pretty good. And this data card takes some uh, blue cotton candy, which we'll make a little bit further below. And the fourth one is uh, takes a uh, little makeup mirror thing and a blank data card and some thermal fluid. And they all have the funny, brightly colored, huge machines that we're going to make it in. This machine here, we're going to make some blue cotton candy. Blue cotton candy is made from orange cotton candy. Orange cotton candy is made from orange face cream and some rocks, apparently. Then we're going to have to cool down a whole bunch of our thermo fluid in these heat radiators down to a negative 10C, and then that is going to go into these guys to get further cooled down into negative 100C, and it's going to spin out some normal 25C stuff. Going to recycle that, a lot of recycling. And then over here, finally, we'll have to cool down our negative 100C to negative 273C. Yeah, that sounds pretty impressive. That's like absolute zero or something. Pretty good. So now that we have all the different recipes laid out, more or less in the order they need to go in, ending up with the final result up top, the energy science, we need to start connecting them together. And since we have so many fluids bouncing around here and they have very specific input-output locations, let's take care of those first. We have four different temperatures of thermo fluid. We'll just run them up the side. We've got these guys plus the cotton candies. All kinds of weird things going on, but the overall throughput is not that high. So we'll just run some pipes up the side and then stretch them across to the individual machines they need to go to. We need to control in a pretty specific way the recycling of the different thermo fluids. If they can't get rid of their output, then the input will stop. The whole thing will jam up. That's no good. So we'll do that in one location so we can keep track of it. Let's start up here. The coldest of the thermofluids is the one we're going to have the least of. We've got how many of these? Eight of these different computer things. So let's start to move them around and shape them into some some lovely uh, netted dough of space science-y bread, I guess. So we can connect these guys together like this. And connect them like that. Do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. Copy, paste. Connect up the pipes like that. That's how you do it. Boom. Easy. And we're also going to need the different sciences. And since this build is kind of temporary, I think we'll use more logistics robots than I might ordinarily do. We'll just have them connected up with a requester chest and have that input. This machine is probably going to go pretty slow anyway. But then we'll have the energy catalog getting outputted. We'll put that onto a belt. It's going to need to go to this guy here and also to this big guy there. So here's the whole thing all laid out. You can kind of see where I stopped bothering with belts and just went all in on the logistics system. Since we're going to tear this down after this video anyway, it was right about this point after that belt. All this stuff in here just have some robots flying around and the overall amount of things flying around isn't really all that high anyway. So I think it should be fine, at least for this build. We're going to need a decent supply of homium plate and a pretty good amount of copper plate. So we got some landing pads here, which I've set up. And if we go back to our home base, we should see the homium plate rocket taking off right there. And the copper plate rocket right there taking off pretty good. And next thing to do, maybe we should connect up some pipes. We are going to use this main bus coming from our starter base actually for these fluids. Because again, we don't need that much. So it should hold up just fine for now. That's some heavy oil and some petroleum gas. Petroleum gas going up here to make the, the orange goop, to make the blue goop, to make the thermo goop. 
and that is going to need some things. We need to put down some robo ports, otherwise the robots are not going to fly around because they have no coverage over here. Was there anything over here I needed to connect? No, I don't think so because I pushed it down further. Okay, maybe we should put down some robo ports. We've got our copper and our homium. One thing I do need to do is actually transfer some of this copper over to a machine. Let me just grab some. Or not to a machine, to a storage chest over here. That needs to go there. Okay, so yeah, let's put down some robo ports. And the robots, I'll just plop some in there. And the overall shape of this thing doesn't really matter that much. They don't need to be perfectly lined up. It's whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm telling this to myself more than to anybody else. Just put them down. There, now there's coverage for most of it, except down here. Okay, looks good. I'll just put down some extra so they have places to recharge at. And this one didn't have coverage either. And there they go, flying around. I think I, do I still have some extra in my inventory? I have an extra construction robot, don't need that. All right, and they're off. Let's run around and check each one. We are creating thermofluid here, which is waiting on cosmic water here, which does not have... Oh, we need... Uh, okay. The, uh, the one thing I think I didn't carry over here is the, the lubricant barrel, so it had to come from a little bit farther away. Now we're making the blue goop, which is making the orange goop, which is headed over here to make cotton candy, except we need the stone... Oh, right, right, right. Okay, another thing I did, uh, so I could wait until I was ready for the video, I rotated the inserters. Now we should get the cotton candy. Now we should get the cotton candy. Oh, I guess we probably need fast inserters. Normal inserters have a hard time grabbing stuff off of a fast belt, and this space belt is the same speed as an express belt on the ground. When it's not in space, I'll just swap these out for fast inserters, even though it won't matter because it's just going to back up, and then it would have been fine. There we go. Okay, are we making the cotton candy? Now it's getting made. Oh, another thing we have to do is we need to put speed modules in everything. Everything's got speed modules, so let's check on our thermofluid. We're making our basic 25C thermofluid here. Okay, looks like it is getting made. Yep, that looks like that's going just fine. So anytime we make fresh thermofluid, since we have to do recycling for every different temperature bracket, we want to make sure that we use up the recycled stuff before we put new stuff into the system. So all of the sources of a new lower threshold temperature of thermofluid, we want to put behind a pump connected to a tank, and then we just wire them together, read the contents of the tank, and say, don't turn that pump on unless we run low on that specific bracket of thermofluid. So we're making the basic 25C here, and it goes into a tank, and we haven't filled up the pipes yet, so it's active. You can see uh, it's got the little green light and whatnot. Then we're cooling it down to the negative 10 here, and since this is the first instance of the negative 10C, we have a similar setup right here. And this guy is not at 5C either, because we just turned all this stuff on. So this pump is also active, then the next one gets cooled down here. We're hypercooling down to negative 100. Hey, autosave. To negative 100. I keep making the timer for the autosave longer and longer, and he keeps showing up in the video, regardless of how long I make that autosave timer. Anyway, so we're cooling down to negative 100C here, and we also get a little bit more of the uh, the recycled uh, whatever whatever that one is, the, the 25C. Because that's the first instance of the negative 100C, we have another pump into tank combo. And then we have here the final form of our, at least currently, I don't think there's a, I don't think we get lower than absolute zero. But here we're making negative 273C, which does not get recycled because this is the uh, the coldest we can make it. So this one doesn't need the pump into tank combo. And then those run up through here until they are needed uh, for the individual machines. This pipe right here doesn't connect over to that pipe right there. I ran low on these things and had to make more, and looks like I never connected that up. Oh, it's still not connect. There. Boom. And I think everything is operational. Added some extra landing pads to bring some more odds and ends from the base, from the ground, up into space. Let's double check everything. Our thermofluid tank is at... Uh, 
5k, so it's stopped. We're recycling. That's good. This one is also at 5k. That's good. This one has 5k as well. And the coldest temperature one is backed up. Pretty nice. We're making cotton candy. That's nice. We're making the blue cotton candy. That's good. We've got polarization data. Electromagnetic data. We're making our blank data cards there. Over here, we're making... Conductivity data, and then over here, the uh, radiation data. All that stuff's going in. These guys making energy catalogs. Energy catalog is making energy insight, and then we're making our energy... Uh, what's it called? Significant data from that energy insight and some thermo fluid. That All that stuff goes in here. Making energy science pack one. I think we're ready to do some science. We've got some of these packs. They've backed up slightly, and they're in the lab's... Let me land on the ground. Let's look at the research menu. Man, it's been forever since we've done this. Since we're using logistics robots at the moment for our science up here, let's just start with the worker robot speed. Actually, next, let's go directly after energy science pack two, because along the way, we'll get a better method of making energy insight. And since we unlocked Holmium Cable, we can set up these machines to make it, and then we can start sending that into space. A beacon here would be really nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, those guys are going super slow. Let's find a beacon there and copy-paste it. See if I can at least hit up uh, two of them. Yeah, that'll be better than nothing. Yeah, that's better. Much better. So just like Energy Science 1, Energy Science 2 has four unique experiments we have to run. We've got to put those experiments on computer chips, turn that into a catalog, find significant data, put stuff in machines, other stuff pops out. Kind of the same thing. We're going to take our berry blast cotton candy, turn it into atomic data right there. Is that getting made? Yep, it's getting made. That's pretty good. Up here, we've got a new material. We're taking our normal cotton candy, our cheddar cheese cotton candy, and we're making a lime explosion cotton candy. That's getting made. Okay, check mark. Up here, we're taking the Lime Explosion Cotton Candy, some coolant, and a blank data card. We're making subatomic data. Connect that pipe so it's got some thermo fluid. Connect that pipe as well so the recycled thermo fluid can exit the machine. It's kind of hard to see if it's hooked up because the machine is blocking the pipes. But it seems to be working because the thermo fluid is exiting the machine. Okay, up here, continuing on, connect that pipe up, and we connect that pipe up, and we connect that pipe up. Third experiment is up here. We're making force field data with uh, polarization data and an electromagnetic field data from the previous series of experiments. And then over here, the fourth one, we're making quantum phenomenon data. And that is... is it getting made? Oh, it doesn't have an output. Okay. This is not hooked up to there. Oh, because uh, the substation blocked my pipe blueprint thing, I guess. Connect that guy up. What about you? Yeah, you were already okay. All right, that's all right then. All four of those guys are coming down here to make our broad energy catalog. That seems like it's working. And that gets combined with our first catalog, the energy catalog one. Those get put together into a new machine. So we've got a new recipe for making energy inside, which is more efficient than the previous one. And we'll get a better recipe every time we go up a tier of science. There's our first Energy Science Pack 2 on the belt. I put Energy Science Pack 1 and Energy Science Pack 2 on the same belt. Okay, we've got Energy Science Pack 2 in the labs. Let's pick a research. We want the beacon. To get to the beacon, we need to go through Homium Solenoid. Okay, fine. Sure, let's do it. And then the beacon after that. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Wide area beacon. Boom. Unlocked. So we've got that unlocked and we'll do the space railway next. We've also got some other cool stuff we can do like a better flat solar panel, some more robot speed, a better method of cooling our thermo fluid, some weapon upgrades, a better RTG for my power armor. That's pretty good. I'll probably do some of these before the beginning of next episode. And then we're going to tear this whole thing down and start over and make something actually good instead of this messy monstrosity. That's going to do it for this episode, though. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.